European Union momentous export destination for Bangladesh RMG products. It's the largest trading partner accounting for more than 25% of Bangladesh's total trade. EU-Bangladesh Cooperation Agreement concluded in 2001 provides a broad scope for cooperation extending to trade and economic development, human rights, good governance, and the environment. Her Excellency Rinchi Tereng, Ambassador of the European Union to Bangladesh, in a recent conversation with Textile Today, opens up about trade relations between Bangladesh and the European Union, safety condition in Bangladesh garments industry, labor rights issue, fair product, etc. How do you see the economic growth of Bangladesh? Is it on the right track? Um, I think another important thing is to focus on inclusive growth, okay. uh, to take everybody along. Um, I think that is a little bit a challenge for Bangladesh, as you see um, that uh, it hasn't performed as well as some other countries in South Asia as far as inclusive growth is okay. concerned. Uh, we're mainly focusing on uh, primary and uh, secondary education, but more also increasingly on vocational education and training. Yeah. Uh, we also have a very large um, budget sector support program in social, social protection, yeah. which will uh, start. So these are important things where we feel that the EU can support uh, our members. Bangladesh will turn into developing country from the least developed country by the year 2027. How can Bangladesh prepare for that transformation? In which pattern you Bangladesh trade will be transformed after the transformation? Then of course there are trade implications as well. Okay. Um, you know that Bangladesh is benefiting from the everything but arms scheme under yeah, the yeah, GSP yeah. regime. Yeah. Um, it means uh, quota-free and duty-free access to the European Union of everything, whether yeah. it's you know from garments to yeah. pharmaceuticals, except of course arms and ammunition. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that will have to change, and um, Bangladesh will have to apply for GSP plus. Uh, EBA uh, can be withdrawn if, for example, the European uh, Commission DG Trade, who is in the in the in the lead on this. Uh, sees that, for example, Bangladesh is not respecting human rights. Uh, I'm, I'm just taking, or any, um, let's not okay. cite Bangladesh, that any given country yeah, yeah. Uh, privileged by these uh, trade, uh, by the EBA, yeah. if such a country is, for example, not respecting human rights, uh, turning back democracy, etc., uh, then these EBA privileges they can be withdrawn. It's a long process, there will be an assessment mission, etc., but it's not that. It is uh, always guaranteed, so that is important to to see. Um, I think for Bangladesh, what is important is to make some progress to become fully ILO compliant okay. uh, in terms of labour rights. Uh, what we think here is especially the freedom of association, um, making some changes still to the labour law, Bangladesh labour law, and the EPZ law. I think the the EPZ yeah. law is especially a bit complex because in economic, uh, the special economic zones, yeah, yeah. the labor should not be subjected to a more exploitation as anywhere else in the country. So these are things that need to be looked into. Okay. What is your viewpoint on the safety uh, condition in Bangladesh uh, garment industry after the completion of the first phase of Accord and Alliance? Mm. How do you evaluate Accord Alliance in terms of safety transformation in Bangladesh apparel sector? Accord only looks at factories where um, they, who are supplying the, um, the the European market and the other compact uh, partners markets. Yeah. So it doesn't look into factories that produce locally or for other uh, countries. So okay. it's not to say that the entire sector is totally safe. Okay. Um, what we also hear that um, factory safety is a long-term process. Yeah. And um, slippage is also. Uh, occur. It's not that once a factory is safe, 
uh, it will still be safe yeah. Yeah. Enough the, the next year yes. because you know uh, uh, safety changes. installation needs yeah. to be they need to be uh, kept uh, working properly uh, there need to be regular inspections and I think that is the importance of the accord in the alliance to oversee this this whole uh, process and um, we feel that um, they should be allowed to uh, stay in Bangladesh, of course engaging with the government maybe in a better way than they have done so far. The cost of garments production in Bangladesh is increasing day by day. On the other hand, you buyers are asking for a lower price. Yeah. Survival is uh, very difficult for the garments uh, entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. How would this problem can be solved? Yeah, it's a very big problem and I think there is a lot of responsibility in Europe and or in the, uh, the buyers' yeah. uh, countries because you cannot on the one hand uh, expect to have a, a fair product yeah. and uh, by squeezing ultimately the laborers. Yeah. And these kind of workshops are an important first step to ensure that um, you know the manufacturers and the buyers are sitting around the table and looking what are the you know the the, the, the problems yeah. here. Uh, ultimately, I think it's uh, the consumer that needs to be more aware. And I yeah. think in Europe, this mm. process is happening. Okay. Um, I, I think the whole concept of fast fashion is something that ultimately needs to grow. that there are 4.5 million people who are working in the textile and yeah. apparel industry. Their wages are one of the lowest in the world. Yeah. How can the apparel industry can pay more for them? So I think here uh, it's probably the, the manufacturers who have to, uh, you know, really look at this and, and, and try and, and, uh, and, and pay more fairer wages. Um, uh, but still, if you see that they're now earning 5,700 or something a month, I mean, there should again be uh, the, the realization that uh, pe people deserve a higher wage. Uh, but in, for, in order for that to happen, the, the laborers themselves also need to be able to organize and have freedom of association. And uh, so, and labor rights are important here. And I think there, this is where we see Bangladesh lagging behind. And um, so, we would expect that uh, the Bangladesh labor law and the EPZ law, especially, would make the necessary amendments. Uh, by the time, hopefully, these laws will go to Parliament, we heard that this will happen in September, and that that will show a, really a commitment. Uh, that Bangladesh is ready to become ILO compliant.